Good morning, everyone. We are here for part two with the wonderful Jane Barlow Christensen, who is the owner now of Barlow Herbals. And here I am with my two products, which I do every morning, come rain or shine. And my other <clears throat> favorite product, everything Jane makes is just wonderful. <clears throat> so welcome, Jane. Thanks, Carol. It's always nice to connect with you and see your cute face, for sure. So I should just, I know I said this for part one. Part one was interrupted when our streaming service decided to go <laughs> offline. Yeah. Um, but I know Jane because her father came to the National College of Naturopathic Medicine in like 1983. That was a long time ago. And I still have his book that he signed. And then when I joined Mindchair, there was Jane. And I went, oh, I know your dad. So we have this wonderful connection. And she took over the company from him and has continued to grow it and expand it. And everything she makes and touches and grows is just the energy really respects plant medicine. Mm, thanks, but Carol. Yeah. I believe in 100% of how calming and beautiful it is. So let's just talk about plant medicine, the healing yeah. energy of plants. Yeah, well, you know, uh, humans have been using plant medicine for since the beginning. Yes. You know, it's pretty recent history that we've been deluged with uh, not just pharmaceuticals, but also bad food and chemicalized food and food that's not grown, that's healthy for us or produced or processed. It's, uh, you know, plant medicine is, is, that is us to the core, that is humans. And that is the way we've been taking care of ourselves since the beginning. So I, I really believe that what's happening is there's a deep wisdom that has been passed along to many people. Um, it's, it's a bit of a lost art, but I feel like it's coming back so strongly because people are realizing these deep truths of how we need to take care of our bodies on a biological level, on a using the gifts of mother nature level so that we can be healthy because health is not that hard. You know, we've complicated the whole health realm and health, <laughs> is, health is easy. Health is simple. Um, so yeah, plant medicine, everyone should be, you know, at least opening the door to putting this into their lives because it can seem overwhelming. I think, um, when you first start going, yeah, I would love to learn more about taking care of myself using plant medicine, but I don't know where to start because there's so much and how do I know if I'm doing it right? And what if I hurt myself more? Because, you know, so there is, there is, um, a wisdom and a learning and a, you have to open the door and then just start. So, so um, it's really interesting when you said health is easy and simple because <clears throat> in some ways it really is. Um, it's only because we've lost our road. We've lost our path with industrialized life that as that's taken over more, we've become sicker as a species and um especially around breast cancer the and a perfect example of this is the japanese women had almost no breast cancer and then as their culture became westernized the breast cancer rates increased exponentially and that is very sad because there are diet was in, inherently healthy and the way they lived was inherently healthy. And when they started, you know, adding saturated fats and fried foods and fast foods, and they lost the beauty of, um, I remember watching this program where this chef um, went to this ancient place where they were using these 200 year old vats to make tamari. And I mean, it was a very beautiful process. And the man said that I need a new vat and there's only one place in the whole planet that makes them. And if he stops making them or he doesn't pass on to the next generation how to make them, I'm not gonna be able to make this product anymore. So, and you could just see the umami, the beauty of that. I mean, that's like plant medicine. They were taking soybeans and it was oozing out of this and you could see it. He had all the liquid was bubbling up and you could see the fermentation and the positive bacteria in there. So plant medicine is like that. 
um, you want to share a little bit about how you process your LDM, because I think that is such an amazing product and you grow it and you harvest it. And then what happens? Yeah. Um, so Lomatium is a antimicrobial. So it, I believe its main properties are antiviral. Um, but it's a plant that grows only in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. And it, you can only wildcraft it. So we um, go out every fall as a family. That's when all the properties of the plant are the highest because there are certain times of year, there's certain times of day, there's, there's nuances with plants and collecting them and drying them and curing them and, and doing all of this stuff um, that come along with it. But what we do is we, um, we harvest this root of the plant in the, in the late fall, we chop it up and lay it on drying racks and it cures for 60 days and it just basically oxidizes and all the oils, like when you chop up a, the root of a lamation plant, um, it just oozes all of these beautiful oils. It's just one of my favorite times of year because even though it's a lot of work, um, there, it's beautiful. it is. And there's something so satisfying about doing things that you know um, have the ability to help us heal, uh, at least on that level, the level of actually, you know, getting your pickaxe and, you know, getting the root, get in a big cleaver and chopping it up. We use these big, beautiful wooden blocks or they're, they're tree, old tree stumps and we have them and we will rotate them as they wear out. But um, then after we dry them and cure them, uh, we, you know, we make sure that they're all laid out perfectly so that they won't, no mold will get on them. And, you know, it's kind of a labor intensive process, but then we, what we do is we barrel it, we double bag it and we barrel it. And then we take it to, there's a place 45 minutes south of where we are here in Salt Lake that does our manufacturing. So we take it there, they put it through a really comprehensive lab test, which a couple of reasons you want to do this. You want to check for any type of um, bacteria or mold or yeast. You want to check for heavy metals. And then we always, one of the things that's really important is you want to check for the correct species because there are wow. different species of plants, even Lomatium, there are different species. So, um, and then we have different formulations. The LDM is just a single of, of Lomatium, but then we have different formulas uh, and we do this, the little salve you held up right. that has lamation infused into oh. an oil oh. and then put into the salve along with all the other ingredients in the essential oils. And it's, it's, um, it's a beautiful process and it's so close to mother nature that your body recognizes it. Like, don't you think you get, You're things getting the, I can just feel like being out in the wilderness, what it, and also you harvest it in a way where you're not being disrespectful to the plant and you're leaving enough so that it can regenerate and provide you with more for the next year. So you're not ravaging the land. You're being very respectful and plants feel that. <clears throat> oh yeah. I mean, we love these little plants. I mean, my, one of my sons, uh, his name is Brian. He's up there on the mountain. That's one of his favorite things to do every fall. And he has this cutest thing he does when he, because sometimes it can be it can take a little while to get a root out because they they purchase on rocky slopes that face south and they purchase be, uh, like between rocks so sometimes it can be just That's easy it can take you a while to get a root out but he'll pull you know i've seen him do this and he'll he'll send me a little video if i'm not up on the hill with him but he'll take pull a plant out he'll hold it he'll make a video and he'll be like i wonder who you're going to go out into the world and heal little plant you know so we are we are literally giving these plants the energy of love and healing besides what they already do because you can of feel that in your tinctures. Yeah. That's why that makes them so phenomenal. It's not like anything else. Yeah. And every woman with breast cancer that I work with is on this. The, I mean, every woman it's like, yeah. you're working with me. Here's the link. You need to purchase these products. Um, <clears throat> and your skin salve is great also when a woman is going through radiation. So, um, I, you know, as a homeopath, when I first start to take someone's case, one of the first ways that I begin is how they talk and their energy. Is somebody a plant? They present in one way. If they're a mineral, they present in another way. If they need an animal remedy, they present in a, in a very specific way. And plants, as in homeopathic terms, are very sensitive beings. And I remember one time I was standing in my garden and I had this beautiful 
pink growing rose bush, which I had staked up and because it was tended to fall. And I just, I gave it a lot of love and it looked wonderful. And my mom came to the back yard and she looked at the plant and she said, oh, that plant isn't worth anything. It's just horrible. And literally in front of my eyes, it went. <laughs> and yeah. I went, oh my God. I mean, literally, it's sort of like somebody had slapped it. And I, I started talking to the plant after my mom left. Oh, I love you. It's okay. You know, I gave it some nice energy and it peaked up a little bit. But I mean, that is the, the nature and the sensitivity and the truth about plants. And when I think about you being out there in the wilderness, um, harvesting these roots, all of that energy is like infusing your cells. So you're like protected on a whole nother level uh, for the winter months. And it's interesting that it comes to fruition with its most concentrated uh, energy in the late fall, which is when all the viral things are just starting when we really need to protect our immune system the most. So there is a whole cycle and rhythm of plant medicine that really helps us stay connected to who we are as sensitive beings. And unfortunately, we've lost that ability to be in tune with the rhythms of nature and the seasons, I think. I think it's coming back though, Carol, like from what I see and, you know, and I might be maybe in a bubble because of what I do, you know, and the people that I am blessed to connect with are people who are, are my kindred spirits, my tribe, my, you know, the people who, find, but here I will tell you the last couple of years has been stunning to me because people are on an awakening journey, realizing how connected to mother earth we are and how we need to take responsibility for, for everything that we do for our health and our life and even the energies that we put out. Because when you're talking about your tree, I'm a total tree hugger. You know, my husband is, he thinks I'm, he thinks I'm totally cute. He doesn't, he doesn't make fun of me, but he just thinks it's just so cute. And, oh, there she is hugging a tree again. Let her go. Let her do her yeah. thing. It's okay. Yeah. Like literally all the trees in our yard, those are my babies and I prune them. I'm the one who goes out and, you know, beautiful. trims them and prunes them and, you know, it's, it's really, I mean, and they're all thriving and there's, we have one pine tree actually in our front yard that looks like it's had a really, really rough winter. And so I was out giving it some love and talking to it. And, and, uh, it's, I told when you said that I was like, oh my gosh, I do the same thing. I do the same. Yeah. Thing. I have pots now and I go over and trim them and I go, how are you guys doing? How's everybody doing? Come on. Oh, you have some dead stuff here. I'm going to cut you off. Cut that off. It's going to hurt a little bit. Here's some Arnica. And then you'll be able to grow a new branch. I mean, <clears throat> we have to. It's yeah. part of us. And that's, you know, when I one of the things I talk about in my community is we have to have something that we do that's not related to work or paying bills or, you know, shopping or cleaning. It has to be something that really nurtures our soul. Wow. And for me, like gardening is that. I mean, yeah. it's even 10 minutes with my little snippers and yeah, water. If, that, if that's not something that people like, they don't like gardening, at least go be out in nature, you know, go experience <laughs> it, go breathe the air. Do not take your technology. I mean, this is a piece of healing that I don't think we realize the power of, you know, it is, it's good to do all the things that will literally affect our biology, but I don't think we realize the effect on our biology of connecting with mother nature away from our technology. So to me, that is, if you're not into gardening, that's totally fine. Yeah, you don't have to be. No, but you know, realize, realize that you are part of this planet. Like we are not separate. And it's not only are we not separate from the planet, we're not separate from each other. You know, like that's why, this is one thing I really love about technology is it allows us to connect because there's a thing called quantum entanglement where you can literally put out to the universe either negative or positive feelings or whatever, or negative yeah. emotions or words. And it doesn't just affect you or the person that is in your near vicinity. These energies literally go all the way out into the quantum realms. I mean, I don't think people realize that and it might sound kind of woo woo, but it's true. So I don't think it's woo, -woo at all. I mean, um, there are people suffering in Ukraine right now, and it's they're not doing it alone. 
you know, the, the whole planet feels it. I mean, there are some intense energy swirling on, around the planet right now. This is why it's really important to put, you know, put out the good vibes, take care of what you can take care of yeah. and don't get sucked into the negativity because there's, there is horrible things happening in the world. There's no doubt about that, but it doesn't help it. If you rotate in fear, which also helps, you know, disease, happen in your body fear and anxiety yes. and stress promote illness yes and yes as much as we can we have to really you know we can't be thinking all the time oh i have to do this i can't be distressed because i'm going to get sick i mean it doesn't work like that we have right. to develop systems now let's talk a little bit about you just have this new product which you sent out an email about which i'm very excited about your k2 Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you talk so, about that? Yeah, so it's a D3, vitamin D3 plus K2. Right. And, and, uh, yeah, great. Yeah, so um, everyone knows, well, I think I think at this point, most people know how essential vitamin D is, but, I, and I'm hoping most people know that vitamin D is actually not even a, a vitamin, technically. Right. It's the steroid hormone that your body- A hormone. hormone. Yeah, when your body gets access to sunlight, it absorbs into your skin, right. and it produces- um, health. It produces, there's so many benefits to vitamin D. Now there are a couple of forms of vitamin D, vitamin D2 and vitamin D3. Mm -hmm. And we find that D3 is the one that is, is, um, the active uh, form, right? Yeah, yes. So what we, it took us a while to find a really good sourcing because to me, um, if you can't get it from the sunshine, it is very important to supplement with vitamin D. Yeah. Um, and, um, one of the main sources that people that make supplements from vitamin D is they use lanolin or the fat that's extracted from sheep's wool mm -hmm. and also some types of fish oil. But we wanted something that was plant-based that was just wow. as powerful. So we actually use lichen, which is, uh, that grows on the barks of trees and it has powerful vitamin D3 and it's vegan and completely plant-based, really, really healthy for the human body. And then we, when you add K2, vitamin K2, it helps with the transportation of the D into the cells. And this is really good for bone health. There are so many reasons uh, for your immune system, but to keep vitamin D in your, in your system is really important, especially if you live in a cold climate. Say you have dark skin, you know, you don't, and your body isn't able to absorb the, the rays of sunshine. Um, and I'm sure you probably even know a whole bunch more about vitamin D. No, that's fine. I, we don't need to go into PubMed research yeah. here. That's not what we're doing. Okay. But, um, you know, one of the reasons I love your tinctures is that there are certain products that I recommend to, let's back up a little bit. We recommend supplements to attend to the internal environment of your body. You want it to become um, pro-health and inhospitable to illness, whether it's cancer or autoimmune or whatever it is, we want to it to be about providing your healthy cells with the energy they need to be able to recognize cancer or an autoimmune inflammatory moment and just eat it up. So we use, I use a lot of supplements for this, for women with breast cancer. And for when you have something that is a you can easily make into a, you know, it's a tincture and you can combine them and add them to a water. Uh, I always grab at that myself because I would much rather take a couple of delicious glasses of plant-based medicine than drink, you know, 10 pills. So I love that your um, D3 and K2 is a liquid because, and it's also vegan. So I have a lot of um, women in my practice who are vegan. I'm going to send this to them, but how how much how many drops do women need to take of this K three D two D three K two Yeah yeah so it, actually we've made it concentrated enough where you only need to do five drops once a day Wow so you don't need much um, and wow. it gives you four thousand IU's of vitamin D three and forty um, I think it's MCG of K two um, right. but the thing is is if you need more than four thousand IU's this is where you need to go check have your levels checked by a doctor because it is it, it is possible to overdo vitamin D. So right. people, people just need to, you know, 4,000 is a real, you know, cause I've heard people say, 
oh, f I've heard 5,000 is your standard. Or even I recommend 5,000 generally, but then I've tested people. But, you know, I have people coming to see me and they've been given 50,000 IU from their oncologist, which really is alarming to me. Yeah, that's that's such like a head uh, hammer hitting somebody over the head because there's no such thing as 50,000 IU in nature. And vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. So, right. you know, it can take longer, but we need to make sure. So if somebody is, I've had women come in and they have a vitamin D level of 14, which is a medical emergency in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So we need to get that up. But so I'll put them on 10,000 IU for maybe three weeks. Right. That's then, great. Um, test and then, you know, maybe keep them on 10,000 for another two weeks, but I'll, I'll monitor and then reduce them to 5,000. Um, perfect. And we need, why do we need K2? Cause I think K2 is, is just, I think K2 is extremely important for bone health, but not just bone health, but immune health. But why did you add this K2 to your wonderful new product? Well, because K2 acts as a carrying agent. Mm -hmm. So it helps with the absorbability, absorbability. It helps vitamin. It actually takes the vitamin D3 and carries it into the cells. So it acts as, it acts as an assistant and you're gonna get a lot more absorbability using, and you don't need much. You don't need much K2 to no. go with the, the D3. 45 micrograms is the usual, you yeah. have 40, I recommend 45, it's the same thing. Yep, yep. And so, so you, could, you could literally probably do six drops then. Yeah. To get to, you know, 5,000, uh, you know, I use of D3 and, 45 of the K2. K2. But that's the beauty of when you have a liquid, you can just right. add another two tiny drops and you have the right. correct dosage. You don't right. need to um, worry about it. Right. And that's one thing we, we really wanted to do is I, you know, it was important to me not to have a something that you have to get every month. You know, let's do something that's a beautiful, clean product. It's liquid and absorbable. And if you do, if you do five drops once a day, one little one ounce bottle, in fact, I've got some right here. Will last. Will last for four months. So let's do something that is, you know, good for everyone. <laughs> it's really okay. simple. In fact, I'll send you some, Carol. I'll send you some. Oh, today. I yeah, and that's now on my standard of care list with all of your products with the um. This. Yeah, that's some good good stuff. Yeah, and I think that um, the E Star. I think that taking these every day has kept me healthy uh, all this winter. And despite some stress, I, I just couldn't imagine starting a day without my herbal tinctures. I just think that yeah. it makes sense. And that's, and that, and then drinking some um, green tea provides the metabolic messaging that you want to provide with your, to your cells of clean energy as opposed to starting the day out with coffee and a pastry or something like that. It's yeah. just a very different message, right? Yeah, I think it's, and too, it's a matter of just uh, switching your habits. And it, it, it's easier said than done, I know, but you have to be willing to go through yeah. the hard stuff to get to the good stuff. And honestly, I would rather feel really good than sit down with a pastry that's going to last for five, five minutes, you know? <laughs> I had to, um, last year I did the shopping for an elderly woman and she was, I didn't interfere with her dietary choices and she'd give me a shopping list to go to Safeway, which I never go to. And I had this food in my cart that was an embarrassment for me. It was like Safeway made pastries, which have nothing to do. I mean, they're just, I wouldn't, if, if maybe if I was starving, I would eat one of them, but you couldn't, they interest me in eating that way. And this is how she ate. And so, you know, that's how a lot of Americans eat. Yeah. And they just don't think anything's wrong with it, which is interesting. They wonder why they don't feel good. They wonder why they have diseases. They wonder why they don't sleep good. Um, why they have a stomach ache, why they have constipation, you know? I don't even think they wonder. I think they have, they eat the way they eat. They have this problem. They go to the doctor, the doctor gives them over the counter XYZ pill yeah. or a prescription and yeah that's it. And so Jane and I are trying to bring the message to the, the universe, to those millions of people out there who have a little bit of interest. Hopefully you'll see this video and you'll start thinking, well, maybe I need to change, stop eating that kind of pastry or start adding some of these tinctures. And um, little by little, you can make big changes in your life and how you feel. And that's the goal. 
Well, and you can also do it like jump in with both feet. Yeah. Rip the band-aid right off. And really it boils down to personal responsibility. Yeah. If your doctor's not responsible for you. Your spouse is not responsible for you. You are responsible for you. And I think when we take back our own power, that's really what that is. And we're willing to say, all right, I'm not going to do that anymore. Then, then we are taking back our own power. And that is, that is where the transformation and the miracles happen so fast. I don't think people realize how fast they can turn their health around. I mean, I've seen things that most people would consider absolute miracles and miracles happen every day. We, yeah. just, we just don't believe that they're possible and we're not really willing to take that responsibility for ourselves. It's, this is, again, it's really not that hard. It's not that hard. And it's really interesting when you've made that decision from inside of yourself, <clears throat> you can go to a wedding or an event or something, and there's all this food there that you've decided is not healthy for you, including the wedding cake. Um, <clears throat> and it loses its appeal. I almost, want, I almost said it loses its sex appeal because it's no longer a draw because the decision has been made and yeah. you're holding on to that decision. Yeah, so, it makes it easy. It does make it easy. But here's, it easy. here's one thing I, I will tell you. Every year on my birthday, there's a favorite bakery that I have here in Salt Lake. And they make, it's a home, it's a home, it's a German bakery. They make this oh. favorite cake and it's all homemade. It's It's got sugar and all the stuff okay. in it. But yeah, and so when I, eat this i eat a slice of cake and as i'm eating it i have so much joy in every bite and my grandkids are usually there and my my and girls, such a beautiful family yeah yeah it's like and i here's the thing when if you're going to indulge in things like that that are just i mean that it's is a celebratory moment you yeah. know i i publish um a holiday baking guide every season <clears throat> and i used to be a pastry chef so i know how to bake with white flour and white sugar yeah. and i've taken that and just transformed it so i don't feel as you're doing that it's a quote bad thing to oh. eat this delicious cake every now and then but you're deciding to do it and it's your birthday and it's a celebratory moment you're sharing with the family it's not like you're a victim oh i went to the wedding and the cake was there and i couldn't help myself well, and it goes further than that. So first of all, I have pure joy while I'm eating it. What and kind of cake is it? I'm just curious, Jane. What is it? So it's, they call it a black and white cake. And uh -huh. so it's got um, one, it's got like three or four layers and they're like chocolate cake, vanilla cake, chocolate cake, vanilla right. cake. And there's a buttercream frosting in between uh -huh. and then more buttercream frosting. And then they pour chocolate ganache over the top. Oh, delicious. It's amazing. But what happens is even when I'm done eating it, I never, ever, ever say, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. I never have any feelings of guilt or any feelings of beating myself up. Now, I say this because in the past, I did do that. I did, I did that in my 20s and 30s. I would overindulge on sweets almost every weekend. And I would then I would beat myself up and I would feel guilty. I feel. And to me, it's like, you're, it's like we were talking about with the plants and you're in the yard, the feelings and the energy and the emotions that you give to the things that you do determine your outcome. Right. So if I'm going to enjoy this cake on my birthday with the people I love, and it's my favorite cake, I'm not going to, at the end of the end of eating it, I'm not going to go, Oh my God, that was so much sugar. I shouldn't have done that ever. I would never. So this is a swap in mindset as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like that phrase, swap your mindset. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It's not that it's like again, I keep saying this, but it's just not that hard. You just have to make a conscious effort. You need to be consciously aware of what you're doing, what you're saying, what you're feeling. You know, it's they all matter. Yeah, and it's not hard, but it's a very foreign concept to our culture, right? It's a very yeah. foreign concept. It's not yeah. part of the American culture. The American culture or the Western culture is more about victimhood, I think. And um, plant medicine is really about understanding the beauty of the gifts of the earth and getting in touch with the plants and being able to hear what they say. And when we make new homeopathic remedies, a group of people get together with a substance 
and it's blinded so people don't know what it is but we sit with it and meditate it and then we write down what we're feeling about it and then we take the remedy and there is a master prover who's watching what everybody's going through and then it's organized into feelings and thoughts and we record our dreams so this is how we make new take plants and which has been expanded in the repertoire repertory over the past 15 years and um make new remedies from them and that's about being clear in ourselves and welcoming the messaging from the plants so i can just imagine what it's like to harvest these roots and they're so sturdy that they're able to survive in adverse conditions and that's what they help you survive so it's very much like treats like uh, the plant medicine is very similar to how homeopathy works yeah exactly and i love that description it's exactly it's exactly how we all should be doing it but again i have a way positive outlook on this i think that humanity is shifting to that i think it's going to become exponential growth uh, as we move along because so many people are realizing that um the, the system is currently broken and they get to they get to do their own due diligence and they get to figure out what is the best for me and this is where i would say again tune into your intuition because there are things with modern medicine that can go along. If there's like, we have to take the best of both. It's That's not what I always say. You have to take the best of both worlds. Yes. yes. So I, I think um, I see the world shifting. So we still, I think we have a little bit of still pain to go through, but don't let it get you discouraged. You know, things to me, I, I have, I've been having the last probably year, extremely vivid dreams about this beautiful place that we're moving into because people are awakening it's it's i don't know how you can't feel it it kind of gives me the shivers just talking about it really well you you are connected to plants in a way with their energy that most of us don't have the fortunate experience of being but i can i can feel it from yeah. you. <laughs> and when you talk about it, you have this glow around you that's really permeating the, the universe. And I think that what Jane said is right. What you feel and what you put out determines what comes back to you. And that is very powerful and it's very empowering. And it's when I work with women now, you know, it used to be, well, what type of breast cancer do you have? What's the pathology report? What's the biopsy? What's the treatment? Now it's all about, I don't even worry about that or think about it. It's like, who are you as a person and what's your energy and what's your past? And what do we need to round out in your, in your energetic sphere and your mindset to begin your healing journey? And then we can look at all the other functional stuff, but we got to get the mind stuff. Yeah, right. I love that you do that, Carol. In fact, are you, are you familiar with Dr. Zach Bush? Mm -mm. So he's um, he's a beautiful doctor, and he has this thing where he says, "Imagine the world of so to take cancer. You a patient goes in and gets a cancer diagnosis, and it's pretty maybe a pretty tough diagnosis. Imagine what would happen if the doctor stood you up and wrapped you in a big hug." and said, you know what? We got this. We know exactly what to do. You're going to come out of this amazing. We're going to do this, this, and this. We're going to, and it's going to be incredible. We've got this great team and you're getting all of this love Nobody. and positivity. Oh. I know, I know that doesn't happen. I have women contact me and they've had 5 billion percent the opposite of what you just I know, but said. that's my point because now what happens is now you push this fear and anxiety onto this person yep. and to heal from something that their body needs to heal from in that type of emotional environment it makes it just it makes it it almost makes it impossible uh, and yeah so i think that if we can you know and i'm not a practitioner but can you imagine how different the outcomes would be if we had that type of a you know, first response of love and we've got this and, and you're going to, you're going to be okay. You're going to be better than okay. We're, you're going to come out of this even better than you were. I mean, it would, it would shift the whole world of disease and cancer diagnoses and 
you know, unfortunately, there's not a lot of money in people getting well from a from a hug. You know what I mean? Well, there's not a lot of money for, for the insurance company putting together systems about healing. Of course, of course. And but, they do the best they can, but it's not, it's fear-based and it's disease-based and it's not energetic-based. It's not holistic. And um, it, it, I just want to say it takes a lot of energy to take the toxicity of that initial introductory to your illness uh, out of people so that they can then get on a healing path. And that's, yeah, we I have to work hard for that because, you know, all of a sudden their cells and their hearts and everything goes into this rigid place. Yeah. And we have to work on getting them to open up and relax and dispelling that message because somebody's sitting there in a white coat. I mean, I have a white jacket. I can wear that if necessary. It's sitting in my closet in the garage, but I'm the opposite of that. Yeah. I, I want to be the more relational healing person. We don't need a white jacket to make people feel afraid of their health. Right. That's correct. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about one more plant before we um, end, because I just love plant medicine. What is outside of, you know, what I, we shared, what is one more plant that you think women need that will help them either spiritually or emotionally or physically? What's another favorite one of your tinctures that you make? You know, the last few years, I've been really especially interested in adaptogenic herbs. I was just thinking that. I mean, I'm sitting here as I, and I'm thinking that I'm going, oh, adaptogens. <laughs> Amazing. So what adaptogens, what are we talking about? Well, so a couple of my favorites are holy basil. I love holy basil. I love suma root. I love maca root, um, ashwagandha, rhodiola. So to say I have a favorite is very difficult because over the years, you know, I'm 61 in a couple of weeks. So over the last 10 years. So you're going to eat your favorite cake soon. You're getting. I know. Ready. I know. I know. Exactly. <laughs> You'll be like, you place the order. They don't, you don't want to. Yeah, I know. It's, well, I've been getting my cake there for like 20 years. So it's like. They know. Oh, April's coming up. It's Jane's birthday cake. Well, it's actually in May. So oh, it's birthday. May. Okay. But it's like through the last 10 years, you know, like when I kind of started going through menopause, it was like, I realized that, okay, I needed to get on some adaptogens. I was in denial for a while. I was like, oh no, there's no way I'm going through menopause. Because I think getting older is, it's it can be hard, but then once you go, oh, it's not a big deal. It is what it is. We're all, this is the path for all of us. Um, but it can help get older if you're here on this planet, yeah. right? And you, you know what my helpful. husband always says? He always says um, uh, the, the alternative is not, I, I'll take this. The alternative yeah. to not getting older is just not being here. Right. So, you know, I think that if, if um, women are really paying attention to the way their body fluctuates with hormones that come and go, if they add, um, I, I think maca, so it's M A C A. Yeah, maca root. yeah, yeah. That's one of my favorites. Uh, we don't make any, we don't make uh, any maca root uh, products, but you can go find um, some good sources of maca root, either in probably tincture or capsule form. And I, I've I love tinctures. Both. I love tinctures too. And we've we've actually had a lot of people ask us to bring some more adaptogens into our line. Um, but we just haven't yet. I mean, we have we have suma root in tissue right. form, and it's in the E star. The way you were holding up the E star, yes, e star. Suma, suma root is in the E star. Do you have um? Do you have um? Holy basil, by the way. We have holy basil in a blend. It's called Moon Mood and Energy Blend, and we have it in a liquid and in a capsule. Okay. So it has holy basil. It does have some rhodiola. It's got some ashwagandha. It's it's actually a well, really that's a really great product. Oh, it's amazing! It's a am, it's amazing. So the liquid is uh, actually reconstituted in organic vegetable glycerin. So it's designed to take sublingual, which is important because it goes to work really fast, goes right to work, and then the capsule form of it actually lasts a little bit. So you have a longer lasting compared to faster acting. But you could take the you could take the liquid in the morning and then an ashwagandha and then a capsule in the um in the afternoon. afternoon. Yeah. 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 And I've done that's why we have both because I've experimented um with, with both forms and I love them both. I in fact uh 
I don't know if I have one. That's going to be on my required list for women now. Well, I'll, I'll, when I send you the vitamin D, I'll send you some. I'll send I you know. some. I, I, I will take it. I, um, I think your products make a difference between feeling like you're on top of your what you have to do every day and feeling like like you're underneath it. And they they are one of the reasons I can show up with such love of what I do and energy because they're just transformative. And that's when I'm trying to help women realize that breast cancer is their path to transformation. And it, they're not a victim of this disease. And it, unfortunately in our society, it, I have to say it 800 times because they're so bogged down by um, the messaging that they get from their oncology departments. Yeah, you're totally correct. Yeah. Um, but plant medicine is the opposite of that. And yeah. that's what we're here to talk about. So Jane, thank you for coming back for part two. Yeah, you're welcome. We got really cut off, didn't we? It was <laughs> the yard. It just, uh, and they sent me an email. We're sorry that happened. And I went, that's not going to cut it. I was in the middle of an interview uh, with an important person and they then made some amends that were better, but you know, it happens. I mean, they lost whatever their internet connection. It happened to everybody. Well, and you know what? Sometimes divine intervention. It's nice to have a follow up. And Part two, you're the last woman. You're the last interview of this cohort of my Empowered Against Recurrence program. And I've done 25 interviews in the last six wow. weeks. And you're the you're the cherry on top of the <laughs> interviews. You're on on the cakes. And oh, nice. Cherry on a cake. Cherry on a cake before your birthday. So yes. thank you and happiest of birthdays, oh, Jane. Thank and you. thank you for all the work that you do with your beautiful company and your herbs and your products. And I'm going to be adding this mood and energy blend and the K2, D3 K2 to the, like everybody gets when they start working with me, they get all these Jane Barlow products, Barlow herbals. So thank you for everything. Well, thanks, Carol. I appreciate you sharing what I do. It's uh, yeah, you know. you're changing the lives of people who are opening up and to plant medicine and to healing and to seeing their life in the world in a more positive, energetic, vibrational field, right? A hundred percent. Yeah, that's what it's about. That's what I'm working on too. Yeah. So, okay, well, thank you, Carol. Thank you. Have a lovely uh, afternoon, Jane. And ladies, it's Carol Laurie, and there'll be more later. It's been wonderful to be here with you. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. Bye for now.